Once upon a time, there was a girl who loved music. She loved listening to the radio. She loved to sing, but most of all, she loved it when her dad sang to her before bedtime. I love you, my daughter. I love you, my daughter. I love you, my daughter. My daughter, I love you. You're beautiful, my daughter. You're beautiful, my daughter. You're beautiful, my daughter. My daughter, I love you. One day, her choir teacher told her that she'd be singing in a historic theater in her hometown. She was so excited, she came home and she memorized the songs in two days. The time for the concert came and they went off without a hitch. She sang like an angel and she had fun on stage with her friends. <clears throat> her parents enjoyed seeing her on stage, but their heart, their heart ached a little bit. The reason their heart ached a little bit is that she uses a wheelchair to get around and the stage wasn't handicap accessible. So instead of her gooding up onto the stage by herself, her mom had her place a chair on the stage while her dad picked her up and carried her and put her in the chair on the stage. Those concerts took place five weeks ago at the Paramount Theater. The girl in the story is my daughter and I am the dad who carried her up onto the stage. My job is not to save the princess like Mario does in Super Mario Brothers. My job is to help the princess become the best princess she can be. And I believe inclusion has the power to do just that. Inclusion is defined as the act of including or the state of being included. We have always included our daughter wherever we go in the community. If we go to church, she comes to church. If we go to the 4th of July fireworks, she comes and watches them with us. If we go to the fair to, to look at the smelly farm animals, she's there smelling them right with us. <clears throat> but little did we know the power of inclusion was already working. As she's grown older, she's been in Girl Scouts and had the opportunity to ride a horse for the first time. For the last two years, she's been in Miracle League T-Ball, where she goes once a week to Rochester to play with other kids with disabilities. And on Wednesday night, she goes and joins her junior high friends in a class at our church. There's been several occasions over the years where people come up to us and say, it's so nice you always include your daughter in whatever you are doing. You are great parents. And I usually say thank you, but at the same time I'm thinking, of course we are including her. Isn't that what parents are supposed to do? But then I remember that the treatment for those with disabilities has improved greatly over the years. Our daughter is able to live at home with us because of the laws that have been passed and the supports that are in place. She's able to attend a neighborhood school and she's able to be in the general education setting with her peers for most of the day. And every Friday morning at 7, 10 a.m., she's at school singing her heart out with her friends in choir. But even though we have come a long way, there is still more that needs to be done. Right now at this very moment, there are students with disabilities who are segregated in self-contained classrooms Right now, at this very moment, there are students with disabilities who do not go to their neighborhood school because either it's not handicap accessible or the special education program is in a different building. Right now, as we speak, there are students in elementary school schools learning life skills. They are folding laundry, they are recycling, picking up recycling and sorting it, and they are copying papers. While their peers are in the classroom learning math, and reading. Right now as we speak there are students with disabilities who have no choice but to ride a special education bus because that's the way the bus company wants to do it. As much as I would love to tell you that the things I just shared were fiction, sadly they are not. Inclusion in the school, spe the school special, excuse me, this inclusion in the school setting so when special education students are included with their peers in the general education classes. When students with disabilities are fully included, all students benefit. Inclusion is powerful. As our daughter has been included more in the regular classroom, we have witnessed the power of inclusion firsthand. She's been invited to birthday parties. She's had a sleepover after the homecoming game. But most of all, she likes when she gets those phone calls from her friends. They talk about their day at school, 
They talk about boys, which makes this dad a little nervous. <laughs> <coughs> but the best thing that she likes to talk about is her favorite singer, Justin Bieber. <laughs> In addition to seeing the benefits our daughter receives, studies have shown inclusion is powerful for those students with disabilities as well. Students perform better in an inclusive setting. Students without disabilities also gain life skills. They gain acceptance, they gain patience, and they gain respect. Inclusion is powerful. The power of inclusion lies in its ability to bring everyone together in such a way that each person's abilities can shine through. A community that excludes even one member is not a community at all. Every person has a purpose, every person has a gift, and every person has something to contribute to the community. If we exclude people, if we segregate people, if we look down on them because they're different, we're no community at all. I believe that if we include students with disabilities from the beginning, all the students will grow up to be adults who value each other's differences and they will work together to transform the world into a more inclusive place for those with disabilities. If you are already standing up for inclusion, I want to say thank you and keep up the good work. If you believe all men are created equal, stand up for inclusion. If you believe every student deserves to be included, stand up for inclusion. If you believe we are better together, stand up for inclusion. Thank you.